everyone, it's Mountain Mom. Today I want to help you turn your yard or outdoor space into a wildlife habitat. Let's go! All right, are you ready? Now, this video is part of the Mountain Mom and Tots Summer Camp. You can check out all the videos and information about Summer Camp at patreon.com slash mountain mom tots. Today, we're gonna to talk about making our outdoor space into a wildlife friendly area. To do that, we have to talk about habitats. Now, what is a habitat? First of all, an animal's habitat is the place where it lives. You could say a habitat is their home, but it has to have certain things, just like your house has certain things that help you survive and thrive, an animal's habitat has these five things to help them survive and thrive. First, food. Everyone's gotta eat. Second, water. If you're an ocean animal, obviously water is very important, but even butterflies and small mammals and birds and squirrels that live outside in many places in the United States, they need water sources too. The third part of a habitat is cover or shelter, places to hide and keep safe and stay away from predators. Fourth, a place to raise young a bird's nest or a burrow. And finally, space. You can't keep a blue whale in your backyard swimming pool because it needs a lot more space than that. Some animals need a little bit of space and some animals need a lot of space. So space is an important part of an animal's habitat. Now, how do you make your yard or outdoor place a animal wildlife friendly zone? Well, I'm going to encourage you to follow these guidelines from the National Wildlife Federation. They have a checklist that's a free and easy download. I have a link below. I also have a link at patreon.com slash mountain mom tots where you can see, hey, what things do I need to provide to help make my area more habitable for wildlife? The first thing on that list is food. So I'm standing here specifically so that I can show you my hummingbird feeder. It's pretty easy to hang up a bird feeder wherever you might be. And that food offers migrating birds, songbirds, and air, depending on the food you provide, birds that can help make your wildlife area a lot more appealing. One of my favorite things to do in the summer is to sit and watch hummingbirds come to this hummingbird feeder because they're so fun. Food could also come in the form of berries, nuts, naturally sourced items that you do not provide. If you have plants that already produce food, that one can be checked right off the list. Next, let's talk about water. For me, this was the hardest part of getting my yard a more wildlife friendly area. I don't have a river or a stream or a pond. But when I looked at the requirements for what wildlife actually need, many small mammals and insects don't need a lot of water. In fact, monarch butterflies, they just need a puddle pool to, in order to get a quick drink as they migrate across the country. So a bird bath is a great solution. I ended up putting in a, what I call a bee bath because I have beehives. And so to encourage those wild creatures. We have a metal tray with water in it and then I put rocks in the bottom so that if the bees get wet they can climb out. Bees can't fly if their wings are wet so they need a space where they can climb out and not drown. The next part of pre providing a wildlife friendly habitat in your own yard is cover. Now we live in the mountains in Utah and our yard already has a lot of cover. We have mature trees, we have ground cover, we don't have a lawn, we have rock piles and a log pile. There's lots of places for animals to hide. But if you live someplace that has a lawn, you could consider turning a corner of your yard into a wild zone. So 
maybe you can take out the grass that monoculture grass it kind of decimates the biodiversity in the area so you could create a compost area you could put in native plants you could do a shrubs or rock pile or even some brush pile if you're taking down trees or um, other limbs if it's allowed in your area then you can keep those to the side and that will allow small animals some cover and shelter from predators next a place to rear young we've been really lucky this spring a mama robin built a nest and laid some eggs and then abandoned the nest and so we got to watch her as she built this nest and laid her robin's eggs all with natural materials that were around us. I tried to provide some of those natural materials and honestly, she found her own. But you could provide a birdhouse or a bat box or anywhere that, uh, even mature trees where a squirrel can make a den or a bird can build a nest. Those all count as safe places where they can raise their young. The final thing to think about when you're turning your yard into a wildlife habitat is space. How much space do you have? How much can you let turn wild? If you have a much smaller space, say you're just living in an apartment, maybe you have a balcony or a front step, even a few potted plants can help the local wildlife or bugs or butterflies in your area find food when they need it. So consider making your space a little bit greener and a little bit healthier for the planet. I really hope that this has helped give you some ideas on how to turn your yard into a wildlife habitat. If you download the free download from the National Wildlife Federation, they are not giving me anything. They are not sponsoring this video in any way. I just thought they have a really great resource that I think you might like. Go ahead and click on the download below. It'll give you a checklist on what you can do to make sure your area is wildlife friendly. And it can also bring up one important part of this whole conversation. The final aspect that the National Wildlife Federation encourages is to use sustainable practices and avoid chemical pesticides. On a personal note, I have bumblebees, uh, sorry, honeybees. They're two different kinds of bees. I have honeybees, and so if there is someone in my neighborhood using chemical pesticides and my bees go and try and get food, they can, you can kill an entire hive that fast by using pesticides like that. And it's not very good for the animals that inhabit this world with us. Another thing that they recommend is being really aware of your water use. Use drip lines or drip irrigation whenever you can in order to reduce the amount of runoff and erosion and wasted water that could be put to use for drinking and for other wildlife needs. I really hope that you can turn your yard into a wildlife habitat. I want to see some photos when you do. Go to patreon.com slash mountainmomtots Join our summer camp and you can post your photos on our exclusive summer camp page. We'll see you in the outdoors.